is Helen Hammond Redding, and I am the Illinois State Director for Community Development for City Group. And I am proud and honored tonight <laughs> to introduce our keynote speaker and also our Dream Maker Award recipient, Mr. Bill Strickland. When I first saw the script to introduce Mr. Strickland, I, in my normal bossy way, said, well, this is not enough information about Mr. Strickland. And then when I saw Mr. Strickland tonight, and I said, Mr. Strickland, I'm going to be introducing you. And he said, you only need to say Bill Strickland from Pittsburgh. <laughs> so I have this lofty high opinion, which has been validated from what I've seen over the past two years about Mr. Strickland. And the script that I'm going to follow is not enough still, I think, about Mr. Strickland. So, I will nevertheless follow the script. Mr. Strickland is president and CEO of Manchester Bidwell Corporation and its subsidiaries. Mr. Strickland builds partnerships to help the disadvantaged build a better future. He's also the author of a great book called Make the Impossible Possible, which includes his story of how a Pittsburgh kid from the ghetto would go on to lecture at Harvard and serve on the National Endowment of the Arts Board. Mr. Strickland is a MacArthur Fellowship Genius Award winner, and he's also a founder of the Grammy-winning MCG Jazz, which is the most successful jazz subscription series in America. Mr. Strickland has partnered with Mondale Christian Development Corporation to replicate his successful and innovative education center here on Chicago's west side, which is now named the Cornerstone Chicago Center of Arts and Technology. That deserves a round of applause. So that's the script. Now I can deviate again. I have been a supporter of Londell Christian Development Corporation through Citigroup for quite a few years because I firmly believe in the work that they're doing over here on the west side of Chicago. About two years ago, I believe it was, Kim invited me to a community meeting after work, and so I came, and I had the honor of hearing Mr. Strickland speak at that meeting. And I walked away from that meeting so impressed with the work that he was doing in Pittsburgh with underserved youth the dignity and, dignity and the respect that he treated these youth with as he trained them. And I told Kim, I don't care what it costs, I'm gonna help you to get Mr. Strickland back to Chicago to get that feasibility study done so that we can get one of those centers over on the west side of Chicago. <laughs> and so we did that. And so Mr. Strickland is here tonight as our keynote speaker, and I have the distinct pleasure of bringing him up to talk with you tonight. So Bill, please come up. Before we do that, we actually have the distinct honor of presenting Bill with an award. And it is, we're gonna do a speed award, because he has a plane to catch. Um, this is the 2012 LCDC Dream Maker Award. And um, the reason why we coined it Dream Maker is because while we know here in Chicago there are a lot of Dream Makers, but we really appreciate him sharing his dream to make our dreams a reality here in Chicago. So thank you, Bill. We're going to quickly, again, he has a plane to catch, so we're going to be really quick, Bill. You want to go on now? And um, we want to briefly share with you all what it is that Bill does. And um, briefly speak about um, how that will impact us here in Chicago. Uh, Thank which, you, Bill. which microphone? I have a lapel mic and I have this You're one. Gonna have
Thanks for the award. <laughs> I didn't come for the award. I actually came to support Lawndale. Um, I've got a few awards. But I came here uh, because I believe in what you're doing. And this, this is really important work. And um, I'm committed to building the center in the city, along with building 99 more in other American cities, uh, for people who have no hope. And um, I am not going to change my mind. I'm quite determined to do this. And I don't care how long it takes. So I, I just kind of want you to understand that as a point of view. So I think the best thing I can do for my little 10 minutes <laughs> is leave you with some pictures of the center I built in Pittsburgh because the pictures tell the story. Um, the whole assumption is the only thing wrong with poor people fundamentally is they don't have any money, which is a curable condition. Because it's all in the way you think about people that drives behavior. So I figured it out through trial and error how to build a world-class training center in the highest crime rate neighborhood in Pittsburgh, and we've never looked back. It's been quite a, quite a ride. And now that we've figured this out, we're, we're going to try to replicate this idea in as many cities as quickly as possible. So Bedwell is a vocational school, and that, that's the center of the building. Um, turn it. Turn it off. You think I'm good? I think you're real good. Okay. <laughs> How about that one? Okay. That's, that's the center we built. And um, not on. Okay. Let's try that. You hear that? Okay, anyway, that's the center. Um, it was designed by a student at Frank Lloyd Wright, the architect. And this building was actually the scale model for the Pittsburgh Airport. And it's in the highest crime rate neighborhood in Pittsburgh, which is my neighborhood. Uh, my whole 65 years of six city blocks. And the whole concept of the center was to take the, the, the concept of treating poor people as liabilities and turn them into assets. So the way that you treat people often determines their performance. So if you build world-class facilities, you get world-class performance. You build prisons, you get prisons. So we built this fabulous facility. We own it. It's a multi-million dollar high design facility in the worst neighborhood in Pittsburgh with the highest crime rate. And it has no metal detector. Nor does it have any security cameras. And in 26 years of operation, we've never lost a screwdriver. No racial incidents, no police calls. And that's not accident. Um, that's values. And what we're really trying to do is to change the way that people see themselves for the better. And when you do that, you get extraordinary outcomes. Next slide. Okay, that's the entrance to the building. Kim's been there and the other Longdale people many times. And uh, we have fabulous artwork throughout the building. There's no antitrust system on the artwork. And we haven't lost anything in 26 years because people respond to the environment where you put them. Next slide. Uh, that's the entrance to the building. Next slide. That's our boardroom. We commissioned the Japanese cabinet maker to do 60 pieces of furniture for our school. We spun the golf into his own business. He's got a year waiting list doing furniture for rich people in Pittsburgh. But we got it for our school. We have fresh flowers in our building every day, not plastic. Uh, now that I'm getting to be a big shot, speaking all over the place. We had a bunch of school principals come visit my school, and they said, wow, this, is great. this place is fabulous. And we were really blown away by them flowers. How did flowers get there? That's the one I got in my car and went out to the greenhouse, and I bought them, and I brought them back, and I put them there. <laughs> you know, you don't need a task force or a study group about five years right? And the concept is that poor people always get the lousy buildings and the malfunctioning equipment and, and things that don't resemble beauty and hope. So I flipped it on its head and said, rather than treat folks with the worst conditions, let's treat them with the best conditions. So every day in our building, you have fresh flowers to greet the kids when they walk into the building. And don't think they don't see that, because they do see that. Next slide. Uh, I hope you all eat Heinz ketchup up here in Chicago. And if you do, you ought to eat more of it. I promote their ketchup wherever I go in the world. And the reason is that Senator Hines, who's our U.S. Senator, 
he was killed in a plane accident, but not before he gave us a million dollars to build a culinary training program for poor people. And um, out of obligation to him and the idea of the Heinz Company, I try to celebrate this man in every speech that I give. And so we take poor folks who have no background in culinary arts and in 10 miles flat they're doing gourmet food preparation in the middle of the inner city of Pittsburgh. And oftentimes we get a 100% graduation rate and a 100% placement rate with people who supposedly don't know anything about food. What we've discovered is they know plenty of things about food. You have to build the environment so they can demonstrate to you what they're capable of. Next slide. Whoever's up there, next slide. Okay, that's our amphitheater. Next slide. And that's our pastry department. Next slide. And that's where we're, guys, we took the design from a Ritz Carlton Hotel and we built one. So the welfare moms and single parents are being trained in a Ritz Carlton kitchen in the middle of the neighborhood because they start producing at a Ritz Carlton level. All right. Next slide. Next slide. Okay. That's in celebration of the salmon I caught on the other side of Lake Michigan. <laughs> and this is the food that we serve the students every day. Wow. We've discovered it's very difficult to teach people when they're hungry. So the answer gets up to eat, but we don't do fast food, we do gourmet food. So every student in the building, every day, gets a gourmet lunch. Why? It's good for their stomachs, but it's also better for their heads. I wanted to take the stigma out of food. Good food for everybody on the planet, not just rich people. And if people tell you that you can't serve gourmet food to poor kids, sell them to Pittsburgh, I've been doing it for 25 years. You just have to want to do it bad enough. Next slide. This is work that the students are doing. These are all the people with no ability, supposedly. Next slide. That's all the pastry. I actually sat down and ate old basket one time. It was very good. <laughs> that's our dining room. This is our concept of a lunchroom for poor folks. So this is where the students eat. And it changes the idea of what they feel about.